how many of you have taken a long and relaxing shower in the last few weeks after a long and uh, hard day of work? Please raise your hand. OK, a lot of you. That's not the case of Aura Sarmiento. Aura Sarmiento is one of the most uh, influential uh, community leaders of one of the poorest sectors, one of the poorest neighborhoods in Caracas. And between the years 2018 and 2019, she, was, uh, she uh, spent more than 500 days without running water through their pipes. And after a dark, hard day of work, uh, Aura, uh, she came home and she had to spend many, many hours carrying water uh, to her home to cook uh, or to have the minimum levels of water for sanitation. That's the situation not only of Aura, that's the situation of millions of Venezuelans. In Caracas, uh, people spend 65% of the time without water running through their pipes of their homes. And it, it could be worse in other states. For example, the Amazon, Amazonas state, uh, the citizens of Amazon states spend 90% of their time without running water through their pipes. Uh, and which is really crazy because uh, Amazon State has two of the most powerful rivers in all the world, the Rio Negro River, Black River, and the Orinoco River. And uh, for many, many years, uh, Nicolás Maduro uh, controlled the Venezuelan population with, an, with a, a narrative. He said that uh, the cause of this water and sanitation problem was climate change. And of course, uh, he controlled all the media. He has the control of the public opinion. And millions of Venezuelans just stake in their homes and accept this reality. Until 2018. In that year, um, my organization, my NGO, organized a group of more than 200 um, community leaders, we developed a mobile app and a web app, and also we reunite uh, a lot of experts and started to collect data about the water and sanitation problems in Caracas and then in many states of Venezuela. After a few weeks of uh, this data collection and after a few weeks of analysis of this data, uh, we um, found that the real causes or the real responsible of this water and sanitation problem was Nicolás Maduro and his government. Uh, the two real causes of this water and sanitation problem was, number one, the mismanagement of the water and sanitation company of Venezuela. It is a public company. And the number two, the corruption. In one of our research, we found that uh, the 70% of the money that should be allocated to the water and sanitation problems uh, ended in the pockets and the account of Nicolás Maduro oligarchs. Uh, but all this control of Nicolás Maduro over the public opinion ended in that year, 2018. We started to use all this data and to spread the through, to spread the real information using social media. And after a few months, people started to go to the street to protest, to organize themselves, and to pressure the government of Nicolás Maduro. After many years of doing this work, we are proud that today, uh, almost all Venezuelans know what is the truth about this issue. Even Nicolás Maduro recognized that the trouble is uh, a problem of mismanage mismanagement and not anymore uh, climate change or any other lies. Uh, different human rights organizations use our data to uh, build a case against Nicolás Maduro in, uh, in front of international organizations. 
UNICEF, uh, uh, the United Nations, use our data to choose where they're going to invest money uh, to, Im to improve water and sanitation and to fight against the humanitarian crisis in Venezuela. And many, many of our community leaders, the leaders of our network, are right now an important and influent leaders in their communities that fight for the human right to water. But Flav Havel, the leader of the democratization movement of uh, the Czech Republic, and also he was the first president of the Czech Republic, uh, wrote a book um, which name is The Power of the Powerless. In this book, uh, he said that the main pillar of the power of a post-totalitarian uh, regime are lies, and, and that the best way to fight against uh, out, uh, uh, one of these systems is to tell the truth, is to live in the truth. That's why I know that uh, someday, I don't know when, I don't know how, but that Venezuelans are going to be free and we all are going to be free because they are every, in every part of the world are people looking for the truth, fighting for the truth, fighting for democracy and freedom. Thank you so much. Wow.